And unconsciously, subconsciously, that's what's driving, that can drive a sexual addiction, a, a, a chemical addiction, a food addiction. Let me tell you something. Food addiction and sexual addiction lend themselves very well to being a substitute for that which you didn't get way back when. Think about it. Food addiction is the same way. Food is a very intimate thing. It can be a substitute. It can be somehow food can begin to, at least in the, for a moment, give us that sense of, what's the word? Satiation. I don't know if I... That sense of being sated. Uh, because it's so sensual. Food is, it can be warm, soft, you know. We touch it. We take it into ourselves. We smell it. It's just totally sensual. It, it, it ministers, if you will, to that unmet need. Now the problem with any addiction is it leaves you more hungry than when you started. Because there's a lie involved, you see. See, any relationship that's an addiction, it's, it's like a false god. So I'll take care of you. You know, that food ain't going to take care of you. It'll make you sick. That sexual addiction will not take care of you. Oh, it may give you a buzz for a moment or five minutes. But then the, what you're left with is the shame of it. You're left with the need. And sometimes the need feels more acute after you've acted out in some addiction. But you know what I'm talking about. I want you to get this because I want you to be able to kind of you can get a better understanding of the human being so you can have a better understanding of yourself. Jesus is ministering to the human being. You, know, you ever see a baby, two or three month old baby at, the, at their mother's breast? And you know, after they've been just feeding for a while, and then you see them just when they're just before they fall asleep and their eyes are kind of glazed and their mouth is half open. They're stoned. They're just stoned. And some of us didn't get enough of that. And we've been trying to replace it ever since. Well, I could go on and on for several days, but I think I should stop here pretty soon. Um, I'll tell you what, let me do this. Uh, let me have five more minutes of your attention. And, um, and then I think we'll just kind of save the rest and uh, come back again and take another shot at it. Um, I think, though, while I'm preparing to just uh, kind of close here, for the evening, let me have the worship team come up and just kind of get ready. Because what we've done is here is we've covered a lot of territory. And again, I'd like you to personalize this as much as you possibly can for yourself. But also, hey, I think that, I think that there is information here that can be helpful to you as you minister to other people. But you know what? In the morning, we'll even go just a little deeper still. Because, you know, any good fortress wall involves more than just what you can see and more than just what we've looked at. What it has is it has a foundation that's deeper still. And if we can't get to that foundation, we're still going to be chipping along too much at the surface. And let me tell you something else. If we can better understand the foundation of the matter, and we can aim the power of the Word of God at the foundation, and we can destroy the foundation, the rest will come crumbling down. The rest will come crumbling down. So let's try to get to the foundation and save ourselves years of therapy, shall we? Okay, okay, okay.
So we want to get as specific as possible as the weekend goes on. Uh, we're getting specific about perhaps what are the deeper issues, but I'm going to tell you something. The Word of God is applied to these deeper issues, and I'm here to tell you tonight, even as John the Baptist said as he was preparing for the ministry of Jesus Christ, see, the axe is already laid to the root of the tree. The Lord is going to bring down the old so he can bring up the new. I, I'm telling you, he's going to bring down the old so he can bring up the new. You know, there has been too much in us that has just been broken and unhealed. Too many of those wounds have become infected. There's been too many pockets of unmet need that have just left us with a huge hole that simply cannot be filled by anything that the world or the devil offered, but the Lord fills every empty place. The world chases every dark shadow. The Spirit of the living God heals every wound. And so I believe that he is doing it and will continue to do it as the evening progresses. I believe that you will leave here even after the weekend and we'll even give you some other tools if you want to just do some deeper work on your own when you leave here. Uh, uh, and I'm just looking for some amazing testimonies under, uh, uh, in the coming weeks and months. Because, you know, life can get a lot simpler than it's been for us so far. It really can. You know, it's going to be so much easier to forgive those who harm us in our lives right now when that wound is not connected to a lifetime of wounds. It's just what it is. Right. It's just this one thing. You see, whatever that one thing, I don't care how big, and it can be big, no matter what you have to deal with, if it's just that one thing today and the power of God, there's nothing we can't deal with. There's nothing we can't overcome. There's no wound that can't be healed. You know, we will be able to cleanly grieve our real losses when they are not connected to a lifetime of losses that have never been resolved. You know, loss and grief, it's part of being human. It's part of the fullness of being human. I don't want to miss feeling about my life. But I'll tell you, the more I heal up, the more courageous I am to feel my life, even the things that really, really hurt. We will better be able to deal with fear as it just jumps up in our lives when it is not connected to a foundation of fear that resides deep within us. You know, then, as we're about to get free, it is then that we will truly then become rooted and established in love. It, it is then that we will be rooted and built up in Him, and then we will become oaks of righteousness, a display of the Lord for the display of his splendor. In Jesus' name, yeah. amen. amen. God bless you. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs>